which is available from where the knowledge in the in the mind of the scientist is stored and is drawn directly by these white rats and this is exactly what uh, once we become conscious it becomes a collective consciousness and when we very knowledgeably access that like the computer being put on to the internet the computer need not contain itself in it all the information available in the net it can draw from the net from world wide just uh, by a button you can draw all the information only thing is you should have the modem you should be connected you should know the mechanism so once uh, this mechanism is known we get the knowledge from outside and what the white rats have essentially we also have in our system but we do not use it or we have put to disuse and we have forgotten that and therefore we are not able to collect the information on intelligence that is lying outside and we are so much bothered about on intelligence we think that knowledge is power and this knowledge is what we gain only and keep it in our mind and we gather it and only this we think is our prestige and our identity and from that we proceed so what happens out of ignorance because what we have is out of a very small knowledge very minuscule of what is totally outside and with that we proceed so we lack the knowledge of the overall things in the central exercise that is one thing that has happened because of being called a uniformed service again we have proved that there is no uniform anywhere in statute in record no order exists where uniform is prescribed only the allowance is given by virtue of calling ourselves uniformed we were insulated from the rest of the central government community we failed to understand from their experiences we we failed to draw the knowledge which is available with the other counterparts in the other departments and as a result we have been poorer in our lifestyle our living conditions in our rights being fought for and unless these things are understood we will not be able to make the progress for the next course so first as an organization or as an individual we will have to realize where we lack what has to be corrected and then only we will be able to contribute even when this governance is going to be where it is participatory we will be in a position to participate in the governance only if we are equipped for that if we are not equipped for that any type of governance which is going to be imposed upon us will be again taken away by a few individuals who are having vested interests and they will only see to it that any policy or program is devised according to their requirements so talk about an inclusive governance where the participation of the governed is a basic requirement because even then we they say even when you get the concept of sanction of the victim you force the victim to give it sanction even for that the victim should be in a position to take a decision for taking a decision you have to know what is good what is bad what is better so for this decision being made for participation in the governance while we expect that the governance has to take into consideration our aspirations our ambitions legitimate etc we also have to be on the other hand prepared to get into that and once we prepare ourselves then the other thing automatically will happen because again the same arvind ghosh said when the youngsters who used to cover mutely when they see a saheb at one point of time start smoking in their presence and put their salams with left hand then it can be understood that the sun has started setting in their empire this was a prophecy so if by our understanding our body language and our reactions to what is happening around us if we are able to convey that we are not going to tolerate the nonsense then automatically nonsense will stop unless we understand that and unless we are able to execute it in all its methods it cannot stop any number of petitions any number of memorandums any number of dharnas you conduct it will not stop 
But if it comes into our mind, if we understand it, again another person in, uh, fa famously said when Gandhiji gave the call for civil disobedience movement in 1920s, Abhidhanath Tagore very famously wrote an open article, The Call of Truth, in which he very, in his masterly stroke, he said, alien rule in India is a veritable chameleon. Yesterday it would have worn the garb of a Mughal emperor. Today it would have been wearing the garb of an English man. Who knows, tomorrow, without shedding a shed of its a virility, it would, have garb, it would garb the color of a brown saib. So, these changes cannot be done by outer methods. It has to come from within, he said. Of course, Gandhiji gave a beautiful reply for that. Emotionally correct, intellectually correct. He said, I have given this uh, call only because I do not feel that it is proper on my part to associate my children with some system with which I do not want myself to be associated with. A grand admission. But then what Tagore said ultimately prevails. Unless an inner understanding takes place and we are prepared for the change, the change, whatever is imposed upon us, will not survive. It cannot stay there. It will be again usurped by vested interests and it will go into the territory of either a monarchy or an oligarchy. It will not be a democracy. We will not have participation there. So the essential thing, what I would like to say is that if we want a participatory governance, we should be prepared to put it in place and we should know what is its requirement and what is our role in that, what is the discipline that is required for us and how it has to be contributed to. And once we understand that, we will get it. Nobody can stop it. Until we understand that, anything else is going to be of no use. Any legislation will not work. For that matter, India's legislation has a very grand history. Tomorrow we are going to have the Republic Day. We know how many times constitution has been altered, amended and changed. There are other countries where constitutions have not undergone so many changes. Yet, the rule of law in many other countries is better than in India because any number of alterations and changes you make, as long as our cunning mind is involved in that, we only try to find out of the loopholes in the law to break it, not to follow it. And once the spirit of following something is there, you need not write it down. It is there. It will be followed. So it is the spirit that concerns. It is what that matters. And as long as it is not there, we will not be able to achieve anything. So we will have to find out what is the spirit. What is the spirit required of a cadre? What is the spirit required in an association? Accordingly, we will have to put our program. And if you engineer the program according to the spirit of the body, then things will automatically work. Now we have been all along doing it in the reverse fashion. From the body, we go into the spirit. That will not work because we will endlessly waste our time in finding out, trying to find out what it is, why the body lays there decaying. So I am very happy that uh, for this inaugural session, though I suggested to Comrade Ajit that there are many other veterans like Comrade Unikishan to deliver such a lecture, he said that uh, after this body took over uh, in the shape of an All India Association, I happened to be the pres president at that time and subsequently secretary general. So he said that uh, uh, all the organization office bearers, if they are there, it will be very nice. And uh, as a matter of fact, as I said, Nagpur also, because I had a special affinity for this place, I thought, okay, I'll come. And I hope whatever is said, because from my experience, I do not feel that by lectures or saying anything or by articles alone, things will be changed. But if by having a discussion on this, uh, having an open thought on this, at least if a few of us are able to get into the mindset of thinking of what should be done, how it would be arranged, what benefit could be achieved by a collective, disciplined approach, knowing what we require and what we stand for, I think we will be going a very great way, whether within our department as well as in our personal lives. And I hope in the future, in days to come also, these lectures will be of very great help and in due course again there is another dream that there cannot be two organizations surviving in this department separately as for superintendents and inspectors because the identities are already merged it's overlapping it's only for the requirement of law that there are some posts called inspectors and superintendents otherwise we have seen that in actual working atmosphere there is no such demarcation or merit in that also so organizationally also for the department's benefit as well as the benefit of the people concerned, 
it is uh, my view that it will be better that uh, both these streams merge and a collective approach is reached. And when this collective approach is reached, again, I would like to remind, mo because most of us here belong to the pre-2004 generation, we should be remembering that the persons who have come into the department after 2004 require to be made to understand that uh, a great deprivation has taken place in the form of they are not being given the pension. And uh, as long as this that is not fought, and uh, it is a very difficult exercise, because all political parties are together in that, in having voted for that. But unless that is changed, we will see that the department will be in another 10 years in very great shambles and ruins. With these few words, I want to give time for the other speakers also, because uh, I should not encroach upon their jurisdiction. And, uh, also encroach upon your jurisdiction for lunch at an appropriate time. I thank the body, present body of the All India Central Access Inspectors Association, my compatriots and comrades who have come from Calcutta so long, and all of you here in Nagpur. Thank you very much for this occasion. Thank you very much again.